Hello there, I'm Ben Finch, host of Freebirds. In my previous video, I shared the story of Kenai Coach. They're in the business of helping people who want to live the luxury class A diesel motor coach lifestyle. They do that by helping them save hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'll link that video here and at the end. In this video, we're doing a walk around tour of one of the favorite motor coaches which we found there at Kenai. It's a 32 foot country coach intrigue. We love it because while it is a luxury class A diesel pusher motor coach, the 32 foot length for its class is small. And actually these coaches are kind of rare. Anyway, the size allows these things to go into a lot of places where you can't take bigger coaches. And that's one of the reasons why we liked this one. This sweet little 32 foot motor coach also does something pretty amazing that others can't do. I'll share that at the very end of my walk around tour. And as is common in RVing, if you create advantages in one area, often you create disadvantages in another. This uh, 32 foot coach has a couple of disadvantages. I'll share the two of those at the very last of the video. Well, that's enough said for now. Let's get this walk around tour started. So Michelle, while I'm thinking and of it, let's give the driver's seat the Hobbit test. Can a five foot two person drive a motor coach? All right, let's check it out. Feet can touch the ground, check. Steering wheel, check. So slide that seat forward. There. Feels good? Feet flat on the floor. Nice. Let me try it. So yeah, that feels good. Uh, this is diesel powered. It's got a 400 horsepower Cummins in it. Um, it's got air brakes. The release is right here. Allison automatic transmission. The shift buttons are here. Uh, just various light controls. Does have a backup camera on it. And this particular one has got a full Pioneer audio system. Uh, the typical gauges up front, speedometer, tachometer, temp, uh, air pressure, things like that. It's got an oil temp for the engine and one other one which is probably for the transmission. Uh, CB radio and computerized airbag leveling. I'm a fan of this split windshield. Uh, from what Terry says is that because they're split in two pieces, yes, you do have a small strip obstructing your view, but being a two piece, it allows it a lot more flex. And so you get a lot less stress cracking. Also, what I like about it is when you do get the invariable uh, broken windshield, which it happens to everyone, it's just a matter of time, you only have to have half of the windshield replaced versus the whole thing. Hey, Shell, why don't you open drawers? Open cabinets. Let's see what we got. You yeah. Want me to start here? Yeah, let's start up here. Okay, just uh, small stuff storage, right? Remotes and whatnot. Looks like all entertainment type stuff and slide controls. Looks like you control both slides from right there. Okay, up here you've got all the holding tank information, generator hours, generator controls. Uh, this one's all also um, equipped with a remote generator start. Uh, this has got central heat. I think it's a diesel fired hydronic heater is what they call those. Different holding tank and battery controls here. I can reach them. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can actually reach them. On our old toy hauler, they put the controller far away, and she could not reach them. Yet she had to poke them with a stick to push buttons. <laughs> Fan controller right there. That looks like a DVD player, maybe, or something. Yep. Okay. That's for the, uh, the wine guard traveler um, dish system and the dish receiver. And looks like maybe a DVD player as well. Cool. So this one has got two twin opposing slides. One there. And the whole kitchen unit slides. So let's start having a look at the kitchen, Shell. You want to start opening stuff up for us? Looks like he built this. Yeah, a little add-on shell. Add it's nice. Hmm. Open that other one. They're not there now, but it looks like some slide type stuff can run along these tracks. Okay. How about the range top? Hmm, two burners. Nice. Spices, huh? Yes. It's handy. Yeah. Like some owner's manuals and stuff, huh? Convection oven. Mm-hmm. Mini extra hooks. Yeah, the previous owner added a whole bunch of them. Let's have, yeah, are we, are we having a look at that sink? Yes. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Interesting. So the, what is, what do you think that's probably like a draining sink for cooking, right? And then larger main one. So at least the larger main one is good size. A lot bigger than our previous toy hauler sink, huh? Yes. This turns, this couch turns into a bed. And it's got seat belts on it, too. Yes. Which is nice for an older coach. What does this little guy do? Okay. So that's travel mode. And that's extend mode. That's a nice feature. And there are two chairs uh, that go right here. Folding chairs. Oh, okay. So you four people, four or five people could sit at that table then. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat. Got some ducts built into the couch for the heat. So let's see how much storage is in these little upper cabinets here. Nice little magazine rack there. Ah, all the owner's manuals. Some other miscellaneous stuff. Freezer. Fridge. Fantastic vent control. And looks like that's probably lighting controls above it. Let's have a look at the shower. Hop in there. Plenty of room. <laughs> Let me try. So I'm six foot one. Have to get up in the skylight a little bit, but it's doable. Plenty of drying hooks in here too. That's cool. I don't think you've looked at the toilet yet, have you, Show? Yes. What do you I have? have? Thoughts? I like it. It's a full size toilet. 
Is it porcelain? I think it is, yes. Full size porcelain toilet. Another fantastic fan. Ooh, you see this? I really like this a lot. Shell, this is radiant heat. It's got radiant heat, radiant floor heat everywhere that there's tile. There is a door right here. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah, let's see that. Oh, it's a pocket door. Sweet. I thought it was accordion. That's a nice pocket door, isn't it? Yes. I mean, when you compare it to a thin little flimsy piece of cloth or plastic, that's a nice little door. Yes. Try this one right here. There's a second pocket door right here. Oh, it locks. Okay. Nice. So more cabinets in here. Flat screen TV and Solar controller. It's got four uh, solar panels up on the roof. We'll have a look at that when we do the exterior walk around. And so then the the owner, the previous owner, um, removed the washer and dryer from here and put in an auxiliary refrigerator. Right in here, it's a nice wardrobe. A little bit of maintenance access in the bottom. And we love this master bedroom area. If we were to buy a coach like this, this would be the first walk around bed that we've ever had in an RV. A definite opulent luxury. You looked around back here yet, Shell? Yes. Oh, kind of cool. There's another generator controller there, and then if you want to preheat the engine, that's what that block heater switch is for. I think the block heater works off the diesel hydronic heater. Plug-ins right by the vet, right by the uh, bed. Very nice. Ooh, deep. Breaker box. So, this is your side of the bed. It always is. After many, 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 many years of marriage. Blissful marriage, I might add. That's right. But, because this is your side of the bed, you would lose this storage area. That's okay. I would take up the closet. No. I would get this too. No. <laughs> Truth be told, my clothes and shoes are more out of control than hers. Truth be told. You agree with that? Big <laughs> truth. <laughs> Love this bedroom storage area. Kind of cool. There's a couple of spotlights up on the roof, searchlight, and there's the controller for them. First time I've ever seen that. There's a drawer, but I think, yes.
there's the storage for the two chairs and then that's engine maintenance access I believe okay so that's the interior let's have a look outside wait let me check something else could I work at this or would I need a desk oh yeah nice I could do business right here so hey another thing that we didn't look at yet was the passenger seat Ooh, a little storage here shell you see that there's little convenient storage areas all over the place so what I was trying to figure out is that thing should slide it's not wanting to do so so I'm guessing that it's power it's a power slide and I don't know how it operates yes success success they don't quite touch do they see if you can lower that down not quite you might need a step of, to put a little step there huh because technically that floor is close to two inches lower than the other floor huh yes we would have to fabricate you a little shelly step wouldn't we for... or i could just drive what or right. i could just drive all the time most of the time okay everyone you heard that it is a deal you can officially drive most of the time while i relax while i take <laughs> naps while i do business well maybe not <laughs> that's what i thought <laughs> So every slide and every window has got full awnings on it and they're nice, uh, they're nice high-end cloth awnings as well. Propane tank. Okay, so this is, this is the one pass-through that's on a 32-footer. On the larger ones, uh, I believe a 36 has two of these paths, pass-throughs with rollable trays. And I believe the 40-footers usually have three. This one's only got one. And it's a little bit unique because the previous owner put in a auxiliary freezer and freezer slash refrigerator kind of too cool he's got a storage space worked out for a table up there he uh, he built in a lot of a lot of cool storage features these pass-throughs will slide in either direction we would have to own this for a while to figure out if we wanted this freezer or if we wanted to go ahead and take it out and use the storage Okay, so you remember me talking about the hydronic heater? I believe this is it. Diesel fuel incoming right here. It's got some sort of burner system inside that heats the hot water. That's used for heat, which circulates around the coach, and I think even provides the heat for the heated tile flooring. And also it can preheat the engine and this is the water pump that circulates it and that is the exhaust where it comes out maintenance access this particular one has all new batteries it's got a new uh, starting battery for the engine and then two AGM batteries for the house. And just more maintenance access. Battery disconnect switch and a bunch of uh, circuit breaker controls over here, fuel filters, fuel water se separator, air intake for the engine. Well, let's head up to the roof next, and let me show you around what's up there. I got some footage from up there, but my settings were off and it didn't turn out. It was too bright and you couldn't see anything. So, uh, I'll make do with some pictures from the Kenai Coach website, 
and I'll just show you everything that's up there. Let's head up. This is the vent cover for the forward fantastic fan and then moving forward there are two auxiliary storage roof pods up here on the roof and this is the forward one and just forward of the roof pod we have the forward air conditioning unit and mounted to the left and the right of the air conditioning unit are four solar panels and then uh, moving forward from that is uh, these two white things on the corners are the powered spotlights for the front there's two of them and then right in the middle in the front is the wine guard traveler satellite dish system then standing at the front and looking towards the back just a little bit different view of everything that i just showed you here we're facing the back and we're standing about two-thirds of the way back you may be curious about those tan strips. They're just simply non-skid strips that have been added to the white fiberglass roof. And so here, looking back, uh, we can see the rest of the stuff. You can barely see it here, but this is the vent cover for the fantastic fan in the bathroom. And then moving rearwards is the rear storage pod. Just behind that is the air conditioning unit and the TV antenna just left of that and lastly on the very back in the middle there is the rear powered spotlight. So one of the things that I really like about the Country Coaches is it's got a side radiator. I didn't know what the difference was until today but Terry described it to me. On the side radiators you're able to get the radiator away from all the stuff that's being kicked up in the back. If you have an oil leak in a rear radiator, that, that radiator will get the oil and then the dust will stick to it. And then before long, you've got a clogged radiator. Or if you're kicking up rocks from the tires, those can end up puncturing or damaging the radiator. So here, it's a lot more protected. It's not going to get any oil. It's not going to get any dust. It's going to stay a lot cleaner than a rear radiator. So I, I really like that. This is where all the, uh, the water storage and gray and black storage is going on in here. And also the exhaust for the generator is back here. It's the other view of the pass-through. You can see the fridge over there on the other side. Eight thousand watt diesel generator. I like the fact, Shell, that we're not laying right on top of it, like is common with most toy haulers. Oops. I'd like to fire that up and see how it sounds inside, and see how it feels from the the bathroom, or I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And just miscellaneous systems in here. I believe a lot of a lot of electrical solenoids, electrical controls. This is the hydraulic pump unit for all the slides. Little air compressor there. Don't quite know what that's for, but I believe that's what it is. So yeah, just a little systems bay. Is it okay if I start the generator? Sure. Nice. I am right above the generator. I can just barely feel a little tiny vibration tickle in my toes, but you can barely hear it. How's it sound to you? Great. So, the Onan gas-powered 4,000 watt generator in our previous toy hauler, it wasn't bad, but oh my gosh, this is way quieter. So yeah, you can just hear the faintest little hum from the bedroom and the generator. Cool, huh? Yes. What do you think? Love it. Drastically different, isn't it? Than having the generator under the bed? Yes. yes. 
Okay, so before buying a rig, you gotta figure out if it's got the weight rating to carry your stuff or not. Let's do that on this 32 footer. Let's figure out how much weight this thing can carry. Okay, so it's got a gross vehicle weight rating of 33,200 pounds. The unloaded vehicle weight is 27,951 pounds. The fresh water if you carry all 110 gallons will weigh 913 the propane will weigh 88 and just a rough estimate of carrying some people will be 462 if you deduct all those weights from your 33200 that gives you a cargo carrying capacity of 3786 pounds that's how much this rig can carry inside of it Okay, next let's figure out how much this coach can tow behind it, whether that's a trailer or a towed, meaning a towable vehicle. So uh, the gross combined vehicle weight rating is 40,200 pounds. You deduct from that the gross vehicle weight, weight rating of 33,200 pounds, and you have a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds. So let's compare and contrast these weight ratings to a brand new 32 foot gas powered Class A motorhome. So this is going to be the Forest River FR3 32 DS. Now I am not doing this to beat up the Forest River FR3. Rather, I just simply want to show that there can be radical differences in the uh, cargo carrying capacity and towing capacity for different classes of RVs. And that's why it's so important to do your homework, do your research, know what it can carry, and know how much weight that you want to carry. So I'm not gonna do the math, I'm just gonna run through this quickly, but the uh, FR3 has a cargo carrying capacity, they've already figured it for you, of 1978 after you deduct the weight of water and propane and people that gives you an adjusted gross cargo carrying capacity of 1061 pounds and then the towing uh, once you de deduct your 20,500 pounds gross vehicle weight rating from your gross combined weight rating of 26,000 pounds you we know that you can tow 5,500 pounds so that just uh, kind of shows you the difference between two different types of motor coaches. Well, this is what I've been dying to show you is how maneuverable this coach is. It is crazy maneuverable. Blew my mind when I saw it. Anyway, uh, between the 32 foot length and the independent front suspension, which allows the, uh, the, the, the front steer wheels to turn a lot tighter, this coach is super maneuverable. Watch as Terry turns it around right in the road. Man, is that cool or what? He didn't even have to back up. Anyway, so that maneuverability is gonna allow the owner of a coach like this to take it in a lot more places. And man, that is such a rare quality for a diesel pusher motor coach. Okay, so the short length creates some pretty awesome advantages. However, there's a couple disadvantages that comes with that as well. And the first one's a little bit obvious, is this coach does not have as much cargo carrying volume as you will with a bigger 40 or 45 foot coach. So just a little bit more limited on uh, the space where you can store and haul stuff. The second thing is, is that while it does have a good towing capacity, it'll tow 7,000 pounds, what it's shown that it's not good at is towing a heavy trailer. So 
if you were to tow, let's say, a 7,000 pound pickup and you were to tow that four down with a tow bar, this coach would do fine with that because the, the, the weight of the pickup is not on the, uh, the tongue of the hitch. However, if you were to carry a heavy car hauling trailer that had a lot of tongue weight, uh, these short coaches don't do well with those because with the short wheelbase of the coach, you put a lot of uh, tongue weight on them and the front end just starts to porpoise a little bit and uh, the front end handling starts to get a little bit squirrely. So it's just best to not try to haul heavy trailers. So those are the two negatives from the short length. So my bottom line assessment of this and, and many of the other uh, used coaches that uh, Kenai Coach has is that they are just an unbelievable value. When you look at this one, even just the extra equipment that's installed up on the roof is worth uh, a whole lot of money if you were to pay to do that yourself. And so by buying these uh, when they're in top condition but used, man, you are just really getting a lot of coach for your money. If I were in the market for one, I wouldn't hesitate to buy one myself. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the walk around tour and found it useful and informative. So next up, you can click here and watch my interview with Terry Smith. He's the owner of Kenai Coach, and in the video, he shares all the advantages of buying one of these beautiful motor coaches. And if you like this walk around tour, just click here to subscribe to Freebirds because I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more walk around tours in the future. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you soon.